so we're alive. Good morning, everybody. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, for those that maybe don't remember me, I don't work here full time anymore. Um, I am John, and this is Chastity. Welcome, John. Okay. So um, we're going to be bringing a cool presentation, cool presentation to you this morning. Um, this is one we take to schools, um, elementaries, uh, preschools. We take them to some of those places. Um, we even have done it here at the DOS for some of our summer camps and different programs like that. Um, so we're going to be talking to you about some things. So we need y'all to interact with us a little bit through this presentation as we throw out some questions. So today, does anyone have an idea what we're talking about? All right. So if y'all can, comment below. Is there anything that you might see in here that would allude to the fact of what are we going to talk about today? And I'll give you a hint here. This animal was central to the way of life of Native Americans here. So that should give you a good tip. Any ideas? Anybody? All right, so it is the buffalo, okay? The North American bison or North American buffalo is what we're gonna talk about today, as well as how it impacted the Native American lives, all right? So Native Americans and the buffalo um, were very connected in their history um, and the livelihood that they encountered, all right? Um, so we're going to throw out some things here. If y'all that are here want to comment below um, your ideas of what these things are, we're not going to tell you right away, all right? We're going to wait till later to tell you what these are, but we're going to hold some things up and comment below and see if you know what these items are, all right? So first we're going to start with this, all right? Some might think it looks like a balloon for your birthday party. Um, it's not. It comes from the buffalo, okay? They would use this item to hold water, to hold different liquids they had. Um, things like that. If anyone has an idea of what these are, go ahead and comment on our feed here and let us know what you think, right? So kids, whatever y'all think these are, they're not balloons, okay? But what are they? They come from the buffalo. And I will tell you, they could flatten out. We're yes. not going to do that because these are really cool like this. But they could make little satchels, little sacks, um, stuff that they could hang on their belts or their horses to carry a little medicine and stuff like that in. So let's grab this. So that's item number one. So if you know what that is, go ahead and comment below. Item number one, what do you think it is? All right, item number two here. It is a bone, all right? But we want you to try to guess which bone, all right? So parents, maybe help your kids a little bit with this one. Um, but this is a bone from the buffalo, all right? What do y'all think item number two is? I thought it was a paddle. I mean, I they could have used it as a paddle. Um, they might use this bone as a paddle, as a shovel. Um, they would use every single part of this buffalo. So um, whatever you think item number two is, go ahead and comment that in the feed as well. All right. We're going to move over here. Um, what do you all think this is? All right. If you've ever seen a buffalo in person, you're probably going to have a good idea of what this is. Okay. Um, this one's been hollowed out and scooped out and formed to make sort of a scoop. All right. They could use this to um, ladle out water um, to maybe cook with. Um, different things like that. They can even use it if they need to dig. Um, so there's lots of different uses for this item. So this is going to be item number three. All right. So when you comment below, let us know what you think item number three is. All right. From there, we're going to move on 
to another part of the buffalo. This is also another bone, all right? Where do you think this bone comes from, all right? Um, this, again, there was lots of different purposes for these. Um, they could use this as a framework if they were building something. They could tie it together with the other bones like this um, to make an outline of whatever they were trying to build, whether that was um, part of their TV, whether that was another tool they were going to use. A lot of uses for these. They could even sharpen these um, into points. All right. Then we're going to look at this. Okay. Oh, no. What is that? Does anyone know what this is? All right, again, if you've seen a buffalo, you probably have a good idea of what this is. Um, they would use these as fly swatters. Um, that's their intended purpose to begin with. Hint. Um, but these would be fly swatters. Um, lots of different purposes. Again, they could use these for a bunch of different things. Um, they could even take the hair off of this and use it to tie things. Um, lots of cool stuff can be done with these items. All right, this is going to be your last item. So if you know what this is, Go ahead and comment what you think this last one is here. All right, so now we're going to move on to a couple items, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you what they are. We're going to talk about it. Um, first is the hide, all right? Buffalo hide. So if you see on this side, this is where the hair is, right? It's extremely soft. I know you can't feel it, but just believe me, it's very soft, all right? Uh, very soft hair and fur here. Um, buffalo, they had to have a lot of hair because where they, where they lived a lot of the time was cold, all right? If you know where buffalo live right now in the United States, you know that it gets very cold there, so they have to be able to um, endure those cold temperatures, all right? On the other side is gonna be their hide, all right? So again, um, not quite as soft, okay? It can be a little harder. Has anyone, ever, if you've ever felt leather, like had leather gloves, um, your mom might have a leather purse, um, dad might have a leather belt. If you've ever felt that, it can be kind of hard, um, but there's different textures with how it's, used okay so if it's just dry in the sun um, it can be very hard can it be soft it can be soft um this shield here also would have been made out of some buffalo hide and it's very very hard okay so they let this harden in the sun um and did some different things with it to make it harder but it can also be very very soft so miss chastity has um, this awesome piece of hide here and if you were to feel this right now you would know that it would be it's very very pliable very soft um, and very smooth. So one side is extremely smooth. So kind of like a pair of glove, gloves um, on the outside. Super, super soft and smooth. This side, um, Chessie, what do you think this side feels like? It feels like leather. It really does. It feels, it's still soft. It's not quite as smooth as this side here. Yeah, it's got a little more texture to it, all right? So it's not quite as soft on this as um, smooth. It's still extremely soft, though. It's a little curvy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's another piece. Um, now, they would do different things um, with these hides to make them soft or hard. Um, right over there, this just to grab that rock right there. Um, if you can see right here, this is what they would call a scraping rock. All right, and they would use the scraping rock when they took the hide off to make sure they got all the meat removed from the hide. All right? Um, that would help it to dry quicker. Um, you don't want those chunks of meat left on there. They would use all of that um, for different purposes. Um, so this scraping rock was very crucial to them when, after they had harvested a buffalo and then would um, take the parts apart um, to use. Um, the hides, how they make them soft. Does anyone have any ideas of how they make them soft? Let you comment below. I'm going to tell you in just a second. I might know. Do you know? Do you have a guess? I have a guess if nobody else can get it. Okay. Anybody think they know what it is? You really need to use your brain for this oh, one. Oh, that's, you're wrong <laughs> for that one, that one. Ugh. So, what they would do, now some of you don't freak out. <laughs> it was common back then. They would take the brain of the buffalo and they would rub it into the hide to help make it smoother and softer, okay? Now, you might, ew, that's gross. <laughs> but you gotta think they had used every possible resource they had um, to make their lives better, all right? Um, so they would use all the parts of the buffalo. So we're going to go ahead and look at this cool little diagram we have here. Y'all can see that. All right. It has a lot of different cool items on there. They would do so much with the buffalo. All right. Um, food. It wasn't just food though. Clothing. Their teepees. Um, equipment. Tools. Um, so many purposes um, the buffalo had for them. 
So if y'all wanna look at that real quick. Glue I found out too, which I didn't think they had. Glue. Mm -hmm. So just as an example, um, they could use the hair from rope pillows. Um, obviously the meat could be used for immediate use, sausages, um, jerky, they would dry it in the sun. Um, just like you eat beef jerky, they would have buffalo jerky. Um, they could use the school, the skull, the skull um, for different purposes, like different rituals and things like that. Um, if anyone has ever been here to the DOS and seen our exhibits, you know that there was, we have the skeleton of a white buffalo. Um, so even the white buffalo played a crucial role in their culture because um, they would use it in their rituals and things like that. Um, so buffalo played an important role in Native American life. All right. Moving from there, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Native Americans. So, who knows what nomadic means? Does anyone know what this word means? I have it right here, in case you don't know how it's spelled. Okay? Nomadic. All right? Any, any guesses? Anyone know? If you don't know, it means that they move from place to place. Okay? So, they didn't just live in one spot. Um, now, many of you might have moved before. Um, but the Native Americans actually moved multiple times a year. Um, so they would take their teepees and set up a camp, um, and then when the food source became scarce or they needed to follow the food source, they would leave. Does anyone know what their food source was? Ms. Chassie, do you know what the food source was? I think I know. You can still get this in really fancy grocery stores today. Does anybody have a guess on that one? They did eat the buffalo. They used every part of the buffalo, so the meat they did use to eat. And they ate some of the other parts too. If y'all wanna ask about that later, you can ask when we take questions at the end. So, um, they would have to follow their food source. So if you know anything about the buffalo, we haven't covered this, is that they migrate, all right? Does anyone, um, do you have any ideas of what other animals migrate? Hmm. Birds? Birds. Has anyone seen geese flying over their heads before? Have you ever heard them honking at you from up in the sky? Um, birds, geese, ducks, um, other migratory birds, they move from place to place depending on the weather and the food source they have available. Um, so the buffalo did the same thing. The buffalo would move from the north to the south um, to follow the, the seasons and their food sources so that they had something to eat. Um, therefore, it was important that the Native Americans also um, migrated, they were nomadic, would migrate to follow the buffalo. Um, so their lives were very much intertwined. Without the buffalo, the Native Americans wouldn't be able to survive, okay? So when we talk about Native Americans, we talked about them being nomadic. Um, they could also be sedentary, okay? That's another way Native Americans could be. This was not common for the Plains Native Americans, okay? They weren't nomadic, they would move from place to place, um, but these were not migratory, okay? So they settled in one spot just like your pioneers did. And if you see the house on here, they did build a little bit more permanent housing than a teepee. Um, though, if you've seen a real teepee, they can be quite large. Mm -hmm. um, I think we brought one in over the summer that was about 12 feet tall and huge around. But if you look at this picture, they did have some other dwellings that they made out of sticks, mm -hmm. mud, grass, straw, straw. stuff like that. Yes. And they could leave it in one place and they'd have home. So your migratory Indians, just like we talked about, your nomadic Indians, they lived in teepees, okay? Have you, anyone that has been here at the Dawson knows that we have a teepee in our galleries. Um, there's even someone inside of it. Peek inside and come and see us. Um, but they would live in these teepees, all right? Um, the outside of these teepees, just like we talked about, these hides, okay? That's what they would use for their, their exterior part of this um, teepee. So they use skins, um, especially the Native Americans of the Great Plains, all right? An interesting fact about teepees as well, um, the guy that comes over the summer to our camps, his name is Curtis, and he told us that once horses were introduced by Spain when they came over, uh, the Indians really started using horses a lot because you can get places faster um, and you could very easily follow the buffalo and hunt the buffalo on horseback. Yes. But they did develop a smaller teepee that's kind of like a tent that we have today that they could roll up and hang on the side of their horse. So whenever they were out, they didn't have to build a temporary shelter, they had something with them. So it was very, very convenient. Yes, and the horses were very, very valuable to them. <clears throat> and if you look 
in our galleries as well. There's a whole section talking about how valuable the horses were to the Native Americans, like Chastity said, um, hunting, travel, um, all those were very important to them. If they could get there a little bit faster, um, that would be a huge help for them as they try to survive on the Great Plains. So I remember earlier we were talking about how they used to hunt for the buffalo before they had horse. What did they yes. do? There's one really so interesting there's kind of it, You know, the Native Americans were engineers, all right? They came up with lots of ways to do things on foot. Um, so one way they would actually hunt the buffalo without horses where they would find either a cliff or um, some sort of ravine and they would actually herd the buffalo off the cliff um, and that would actually help them to be able to hunt the buffalo without trying to chase them on foot because um, that wasn't always very su successful. So a male <coughs> buffalo can be up to six and a half feet tall so that's pretty tall and over a ton yes. so over 2,000 pounds it's a huge animal. Very, it very made large. it a lot safer for them if they did something like that. If you've ever seen some cows while you're driving down the road or maybe some of you have some cows um, the Native American, or Native American, North American uh, buffalo is actually much larger than your normal cow, all right? So you also animals at home, if you have or you see them along the road, um, they're much larger than those. So if you can imagine trying to hunt them on foot was not easy for them, okay? All right, so we're going to circle back a little bit and we're going to look at these parts again. So I hope we had some guesses below. Um, if not, we're going to go ahead and walk through what these items are. All right, so the first thing we have right here, Miss Chastity, do you know what this is? We have one in our body. I think it's a bladder. It is a bladder, all right? So the buffalo bladder was extremely important to the Native Americans. Like I said before, um, this was their water bottle, their canteen, all right? Some of you would be like, ew, that's hydro gross. <laughs> oh no, she did it. All right, so they're, they're their drink, their container, they would use these for all sorts of things, all right? Very, very important to them. All right, what do you think this paddle is, Miss Chastity? Do you know? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Did you turn it on for a second? You can figure Could it, it be? out. Could it What is it, on? I think it might be your shoulder. I will tell you it's their shoulder blade, all right? So very important part of their body as well. Very large, can you imagine? That's their shoulder blade, like that's huge. They're huge animals, all right? Um, and they would use this like we talked about, paddles, scoops, shovels, um, lots of different things with these bones. A lot of bones you can see were made um, into knife handles and things like that as well. All right, I believe this was next. Our scoop, what do you think it is? It's my hint. It's a buffalo horn, all right? It is a buffalo horn. Um, they would carve them out in different shapes. They'd be used them for different things. This one here uh, would be used as a ladle or a scoop. All right. We've got another bone here. Does anybody like to eat ribs? <laughs> That's what this is, all right? This is a buffalo rib. Can you imagine those pork ribs you eat at home? They're like half the size, all right? We got some buffalo ribs here. You would only need one of those. Yeah, just one. I think we skipped over the cup earlier. We did. We're going to look at that. Um, and our last item that we had y'all guess about was this here. Our fly swatter. You just use it, you know, just <laughs> swat the flies away. What do y'all think this is for or was on the buffalo? This was the tail. Yeah, that's okay. what we the buffalo on. tail, just like that. Okay. Um, one item we did not talk about yet is this. This is a cup, okay? Um, this is actually made from a buffalo horn, all right? So they hollowed it out, cut it down, um, would seal it off with another piece of the horn or bone, um, and they would make little cups out of these things, all right? Again, they were engineers. They used every single part they could to make their lives better, all right? Okay, so... Um, as you all have seen, we've also got some really cool pictures here. Um, this one here shows how the Native Americans would hunt buffalo um, using bows and arrows, um, using horses, using spears. Um, but it also depicts that life was not easy, okay? Life was not always easy for them. Hunting was not always simple. Uh, it was a very big task that they had to do. Um, it wasn't like just running to the grocery store to buy you know, your meat from the store, even though that's not easy right now either. Um, 
you know, it was very, very difficult for them. They had to work very, very hard to survive and to live. Um, and life was not easy on the plains then. Um, this picture here even depicts later years when um, the pioneers moved out there and they would begin to hunt the buffalo using guns. Um, you can see them hiding in the ravine, um, trying to hunt the buffalo because the buffalo would also be important to those early pioneers as well. I wonder how that affected the food source for the Native Americans. Um, through history, we see that, you know, when the pioneers moved out west, it, it became harder for Native Americans. That's why you saw a lot of clashes between the two, um, because their way of life was being um, kind of changed, because um, pioneers had guns. It was much easier for them to hunt the buffalo. Um, they could kill more buffalo at one time. Um, and so the Native Americans began to struggle through those years as they um, fought to keep their food source and survive. Did the Native Americans ever hunt for trophy? Um, trophy wasn't really what they would hunt for. Now they might use parts of the animal um, in their culture and rituals, but they would mainly hunt just to use that source of food or um, clothing. What about the people who were moving west later on? Now, as pioneers moved west um, and the railroad came out, you saw that a lot of people would just hunt for uh, fun or either for certain parts of the buffalo and would not use the whole thing. Um, so that became an issue as well as the Native Americans trying to survive. Um, pioneers would kill the buffalo either just for their hides or um, other parts and not use the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I believe at one time, and this is very sad, but it's part of our history, uh, did the government get involved? Yes, yeah, so the government, the buffalo was a problem for railroads, but also um, when the government was trying to make sure the Native Americans stayed on their um, land that they were giving them as their sections, um, they actually would pay people to go out and hunt the buffalo to help keep the Native Americans in one section instead of migrating and no, um, living their nomadic lives. All right, so I think we're gonna move over to our craft for today. We actually have a, a kind of assignment for y'all to do at home. Um, we know y'all aren't in school right now, some of you are on spring break, but this is a fun activity you can do at home um, that will really help you understand how the Native Americans live in their lifestyle. Okay, so our museum, director of museum affairs, Amanda, made this for us real quick this morning. Um, this is what it's kind of gonna look like when you're finished, but we are gonna pretend like we have a buffalo hide, okay? We're gonna pretend like we have a buffalo hide and we're going to tell a little story. The Native Americans did do this. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times on ceremonial clothes and things like that. Uh, they would tell a little story. So she's written one out for us. All you need for this project, if you don't have long construction paper, that's fine. If you don't have brown, that's fine. It's still gonna look really neat. So get yourself a piece of construction paper. Some crayons. It doesn't have to be black, but black shows up really well. And then we will be uploading this picture dictionary online. And when Amanda was making hers this morning, she said, oh gosh, I remember this didn't have a lot of verbs in it. So we're gonna encourage you to make up your own symbols for verbs and other things that are relevant to your life right now. Maybe tell a story of what you've been doing during the quarantine. That might be interesting for people later on. When you're done with telling your story, you're gonna take your paper and you're gonna rip the edges. Do you wanna show them how to do that? Very simple. And once you get all your edges torn off, this is the fun part. You can crumple your paper up. Crumple it up like this. The more you crumple it, the softer it gets. Okay? Don't and try then, to make it perfect. No, no, don't make it perfect. These pieces work perfect. Okay? The softer it gets, and you'll notice, keep going. It's really nice. It's kind of a neat little thing. But you have your own piece of buffalo hide here. Amanda wants us to show you where they would, might oh. put that there. Yeah, just like that. So See, not perfect. They look the exact same. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I do want to mention as well, once all of this craziness is over, I do believe we have a buffalo exhibit coming to the DOS towards the end of the year that's supposed to be really cool. So we'll give you some more information about that when we post this video. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming and joining us here at the DOS today. Um, it's been a lot of fun. We hope to see you again soon. If you will, um, when you make your crafts, go ahead and take a picture and tag us in it. And we would love to see your crafts. You can even comment in the section with your pictures of your um, awesome stories. And she's come up with a hashtag, DOS Kids at Home. So use that Perfect. one too. Perfect. Use that hashtag. Um, we really appreciate this. We can't wait to see you again in person. Um, but till then, 
join us here on our Facebook Lives and our Facebook feed. All right. Bye. Bye.